Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to count unique rows with Power Query. So this is the second video in our series of solution videos to our data analysis challenge. If you haven't seen the challenge yet, it's based on a great question submitted by Rob, a member of our Elevate Excel training program. And essentially, he has some CRM data that he's analyzing and trying to create a summary report like this of deal count by sales stage. Now the problem here is that there are multiple rows for each deal in the source data. We can see here we have uh, the deal IDs are the same for all these rows. The sales stage is the same, but there are different products here that make up the different rows. So what we need to do is do a distinct count or count the unique rows for each deal ID to create this summary report. And we can do this with Power Query. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. In the last video, I explained how to do this with a pivot table. Now we're going to look at how to do this with Power Query. And thanks again if you did submit a solution and posted a comment below the video or the post. There are a lot of great ones, and uh, Power Query is another great way to go about it. I will say that it's, uh, Power Query is only going to be available on Excel 2010 or later for Windows. So this solution will only work on the Windows version of Excel 2010 or later. Hopefully that'll be available on the Mac as well in the future, the Mac version of Excel. But it's a little bit more limited. That's why I'm doing this one second. The last video on pivot tables could work, uh, that solution could work on any version of Excel. So let's take a look at how to do this with Power Query. We'll select any cell in the data range here. We're first going to format this as a table. So Home tab, Format as Table. We'll just right click any of these, apply and clear formatting, and we'll hit OK. So now that we have our data formatted as a table, we're going to go to the Data tab. And in the Get and Transform section here, this is Power Query. If you're on an older version of Excel, you'll install the Power Query add-in and you'll have a Power Query tab, separate tab for Power Query. But then we're going to uh, click the button, the From Table or Range button here on the Data tab. So we'll go ahead and click that. That'll open up the uh, Power Query editor and load a preview of our data. And now we just really need to take two steps. The first step is that we want to remove duplicates. And we can do this across multiple columns. So I'm going to select the deal ID column, and then I'm gonna hold the control or shift key and select the sales stage column, because we want to remove the duplicates based on both of these columns. So this will really combine both of these values together and then just uh, remove duplicates for both of those. So we'll go ahead and right click either one of the columns and choose remove duplicates. And again, now we just get this list of uniques with each deal ID and sales stage. The other uh, columns really don't matter at this point. Next, we want to find the count and we can use the group function in Power Query for this. So I'm just going to select the sales stage column here because we want to count uh, each of these sales stages, count the number of those and create that report. So we'll select this on the Home tab. We're going to choose Group By, and that will bring up the Group By window. And we can just leave this with the basic settings here. We're going to Group By Sales Stage, and the operation here will be counting the number of rows. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and that will leave us with the report. So what it's done, the group by has done, is gone and found all of the unique values in the sales stage column, and then added this count column that counts the number of rows here for each of those stages. So this is the report here. Now we'll click uh, the top half of the close and load button and that's going to add a new worksheet into our workbook with a table that shows the output. So here's the end result here. Now, this will also work when we add new data. So I provided an, a tab with new data here. I'm just going to copy this, hit Control C on the keyboard. We'll go over to our data sheet. I'll just uh, select cell, hit Control down arrow to go to the bottom. Then I'm going to paste that data right here our table will automatically extend to include that new data. And then we can go over to our sheet with the output table here, and we can right click any cell and hit refresh. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. So that's going to refresh the query, run those same steps again. 
and output the results. It also adds a new sales stage we had there with our new data uh, for proposal and all of the results are correct. So this is a great way to go about it with Power Query. Uh, some of the advantages here is that you might be connecting directly to a database or a source that has your data, and you can do that with Power Query. The data does not need to be in an Excel uh, worksheet. It could be in a CSV file or some other database or even a website where you're connecting directly to, and then you can create this output report on a new sheet. One of the disadvantages here is that we don't have any flexibility with filtering based on some of those other columns. Like we saw in the last video with the solution with Power Pivot, we, will, we were able to filter down by product and still get the uh, report. And if I jump back over to, or I'll, I'll show that file here, here's the Power Pivot solution with a pivot table. I've added a slicer in here, and now I can filter down uh, by different products and still see the results here, uh, the correct results in the pivot table. We don't really have that flexibility with Power Pivot. So potentially, I'm sorry, with Power Query, uh, potentially with Power Query, we could just output the unique values and then create a pivot table as well. So there's some options there, but we're still pretty limited on how we can filter down and have, add flexibility to this report. So this static report here is still refreshable, it still works, but if we wanted a more dynamic solution, I think the pivot table is still a really good solution. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how to solve this problem with the new dynamic array functions and formulas. But if you have any questions on this Power Query solution, please leave a comment right below this video. So as you'll see in this video series, there are a lot of ways to solve a problem in Excel. If you'd like to learn more about these new modern features of Excel like Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI, even pivot tables, macros, and VBA, then check out my free webinar going on right now called the Modern Excel Blueprint. During the webinar, I explain what each of these tools does and how you can fit these into your workflows to save you a ton of time with your job automate processes and produce results that matter and of course also become the excel hero of your organization so the webinar is going on right now it's running at multiple days and times and you can click the link right below this video we'll probably have one up here somewhere as well that you can click on and get registered and signed up thanks again for watching have a great day and i'll see you in the next video